close to your TV with your chair because we are about to have an interesting conversation with the one and only Prince Musao. He's a Kenyan author and a writer. Good morning. Good Prince. morning to you. First of all, the word, the, the name Prince, is it, is it on your ID? <laughs> no, Prince is not on my ID. It's uh -huh. a nickname that I was given while growing up. Okay. Yeah. But I'm planning to pursue the process of having it uh, formalized. All right. Yeah. You want to add it on your on my details, ID. Yeah. official details, yeah. ID, passport, Kilamali birth certificate. Yes, because almost every other person knows me by that name. Right. Yeah. But uh, you're originally from Mombasa. Yes. So maybe you can tell us a little bit uh, of a short story. Um, uh, interesting stories about where you come from, how was your childhood like, what inspired your journey, where did you school, career-wise. Who are you before we get to now writing of books? Okay. My name is Prince Musau. I was born and born in uh, Makueni, uh, Mboni. That is where I schooled uh, from form, form one, from standard one up to fourth form. Okay. So we, I set for my form for examinations during uh, the post-election violence. Okay. And that was in 2007. 2007. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I didn't make the cut to the university. Mm -hmm. So the only option that I had was either to pursue a parallel degree okay. or to join the military. Mm -hmm and I opted to join the military. Mm -hmm. And you did join the military? Yes, mm -hmm. I joined the military at 18. Mm -hmm. uh, pursued uh, an intelligence career for seven years mm -hmm. until I left in 2015. Resigned or issues or got fired? Uh, resigned, mm -hmm. yeah. The reason? Because <laughs> the military is intense. Uh, some of the stories I've heard, now that you're an author, there's this author of this book called Robin Sharma, who's also in military, the leader who had no title. Yeah. I don't know if you've read it, but definitely you'll find out. Yeah. He was also in the military, but retired due to mental health issues because of the traumatic events that happened in that sphere. So for you, was it traumatic? Am I just got tired, hung the boots, and then you came to something else? Uh, personally, uh, it was... Uh while in the military, I started uh, my studies in the University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And um, you remember during that time, okay. Kenya was, was, was at war with the Al-Shabaab. And right. we were acti actively involved in, mm -hmm. uh, in the fight against the Al-Shabaab yeah. during that time. Mm -hmm. So at some point, I, it became uh, difficult for me to jungle between my studies and uh, my job. And I had to choose one. Uh, having had a passion for writing since childhood, I opted to choose my studies. And that is why I left. Mm -hmm. I have actually written, my second book is titled Tales of the Warfront. Right. It gives my, my entire story, mm -hmm. my journey in the military right. during those seven years. It right. also gives um, some of my experiences. Right. in some of the operations that have that uh, the military have, have successfully uh, conducted mm -hmm. uh, like uh, the west gate attack right some uh, were you at the front line at the west gate attack that time in intelligence you can't be at the front line right it's yeah, intense yeah, i know yeah mm -hmm. so we, I was, but at that time I was I was in intelligence. Okay. I had already moved from general duty to intel to, to to intelligence. And it's a busy desk. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the Garissa attack, whatever happened, okay. there's a whole chapter on that. There's a whole chapter on uh, the Westgate attack too. Mm -hmm. uh, the you said the book is tells of Te tales of the war front. Tales of the war front. An yes. Interesting book. Hopefully you have a copy. <laughs> you leave it with me. <laughs> Definitely I'll give you a copy. Yes, sir. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that book gives gives my entire story, the eyes and the laws, okay. and up to the reason why I quit. You decided to quit military. Yes. So right. anyone who... So you quit in 2015. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So anyone who wants to get the whole story about uh, my journey in the military can I can actually get a copy of that book. It's available right. in soft copy, uh, paperback, and hard copy. All right. Yeah. That's your second book? That was my second book. Uh, your first one? My first book is, uh, is titled The Broken Snare. Mm. 
Yes. Interesting title as well. That is a yeah, it's a it's a Christian book. Okay. I'm a versatile writer, mm -hmm. so bo all my books are not in one genre. Mm -hmm. Because the first one is uh, is a Christian book. Okay. Uh, but the first two books are majorly up, they majorly revolve around my life. Mm -hmm. uh, so the broken snare gives a, a picture of some of the struggles that I've had in life. Mm -hmm. From and childhood to adulthood from childhood, to career. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and how God, God has come through for me at times that I didn't, I didn't think that uh, mm -hmm. there would be any hope beyond that. Right. Yes. Interesting. Uh, also in your first book, please tell us, uh, when did you write it? Or did you write it well in the military, am I out of the military, or just before joining the military? I wrote, uh, the first book that I wrote in the military, I lost the manuscript. Oh. So I used to write uh, in a book. So you, you'd like journal? Yes. You're journaling, when I can not in yes. any, an event happens, you take note, you jot it down. Yes. And you keep a record, and yes. then finally translate to a book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I lost that manuscript. Mm -hmm. So you are disappointed. Of I lost, course, yes, because uh -huh. it had a lot of accurate information. Mm -hmm. So the broken snare now happens now to be my official first. Okay. And um, it has a story. In 2019, right? Mm -hmm. We launched. Uh, we launched it in 2019. Okay. And it has a story. There's a story that I shared. I've shared. Uh, on my Twitter handle, it went viral mm -hmm. about uh, uh, there's a there's a certain church that I used to go to in Nairobi, mm -hmm. and I, at that point I was going through so many things in life. Right. Uh, wherever wherever I was working at that time, the job had ended. You have your landlord chasing you and stuff, yeah. and then his family as well. Yes. Uh -huh. And then all of a sudden, uh, the pastor's wife approaches you and tells you that they want to give you 600,000 to kill their husband. So it has a very juicy story. Please get deeper into it. <laughs> let, let, let's also to Shikili Yaupo. And then what happened next after this approach? So and it's coming from a pastor's wife. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what happened? Uh, you see, this is somebody that we had disengaged for some time, mm -hmm. but she knew that uh, she knew my professional background. Okay. So she knew that this is something that I could have done so easily. Uh, because you've been from the military. Yes, mm -hmm. and I have done intelligence. Right. Then, um, so all of a sudden, one day she calls me, tells me that she wants us to meet. Okay. And we, we go meet, and we just catch up. Right. At the end of, 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 of the meeting, she gives me 20,000. This is at a restaurant, at a hotel? At a, a restaurant. Mm -hmm. A restaurant. Just right here in the city? Yes. Okay. Back then I was in Nairobi. Okay. So she gives me 20,000. I don't understand what is a 20,000 for. Right. Was she it like after you had a meal, you guys are saying goodbye? Yes. And she's like, ah, she crazy. And yeah. could bless, you know? Y yes. And you took it? I took it. Okay. So she sets another meeting. We meet, and then now in the second meeting is when she drops the bomb, the bombshell. That she mm -hmm. wants. This is what she wants. Okay. And then uh, one thing that I had uh, sworn to myself when I was leaving the military is that I would not. Uh, I'll never use my military knowledge for criminal uh, activities. Right. But I still had the expertise in intelligence. Yeah. So I really wanted to know mm -hmm. how how these people had gotten to this point. Because right. growing up, mm -hmm. these are this is a couple that we used to watch and and, and admire mm -hmm. because they were so much in love. And in church. Yes. Now, to even make it big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't understand why all of a sudden they had fallen out of love to a point where one wants wanted to the husband wants the other one dead mm -hmm. and then um, so I, I i chose to dig deep, deeper uh -huh. uh, we we talked about it set another meeting talked about it mm -hmm. and then all of 
uh, all along I was I was recording everything on with my phone. Okay. In case anything happens. Yeah, because intelligence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're always with recorders <laughs> hidden. Yeah. But they will also tell us if you guys even have cameras on the eyelid. <laughs> You'll tell us with later on. Mm -hmm. so, so you did the recording. Yes. Mm -hmm. So afterwards, um, after the third, the third meeting now, okay. is when I told her I'll give you my feedback. feedback. I went home. So when I went home, I just packed my, my belongings and went to Shags. Okay. S Sat down. Nairobi to now Makueni. Makueni. Right. Yeah. Sat down with my parents because this is, this is, a, this is a couple that we all knew. Mm -hmm. Uh, and told them everything. Right. Your family knows them as well? Yes. Your dad, mom, and even your siblings? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was shocking. How did they receive it when you told them that? See, the first, the first, uh, the first uh, reaction was like, is this a cooked story? Am I, yeah. Are you high on something? Or something? Are you mentally going cuckoo? <laughs> yeah. Because you're from military, there's always traumas yeah. <laughs> that make you go cuckoo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but so, what did they react? They, they I advice gave them to the yours? recordings. Oh, they, listened, they listened to the recordings. They listened mm -hmm. to everything. Okay. And then um, afterwards, no, they, then that's when, when when I made a decision mm -hmm. that uh, I will give all the evidence that I had to the husband. Wow. So, without calling the wife, I we called the husband. No. and told him that your wife wants you dead. Dead. Be I remember before, you be, before, before you proceed, please yeah. hold it there first. Uh, the reason this wife wants the husband dead, and the husband is a pastor, right? Yeah. Yeah, please, what was the reason? Uh, she was claiming that uh, uh, the man had become promiscuous, and then uh, he had become too violent and right. possessive. And that... Right. Uh, you see, all along, the wife was working okay. and the man was, was in ministry. Mm -hmm. So I think she had come to a point of feeling that I have met this man okay. and then when he, come, when, when he makes it, then he, started, he starts doing other things here and there. I think uh, uh, those were basically the sources of the, of the bitterness. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so the reason is infidelity. Infidelity, violence, and those kind of things. All right. Yeah. Now uh, pr proceed from where you had left off. The husband, you've now told the husband your wife wants you dead. Yeah. Uh, the reaction? He was in a church setting, actually. Okay. I think he left the church uh -huh. to go sit in a private place mm -hmm. so that I can give him the whole story. Right. So I gave him the whole story, I sent him all the recordings that I had, and we called it a day. And I told him, from now on, whatever you do with the information that I've given you is up, up to, you, to you. But I don't want to be involved in all this. All right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, but let's finish up with that part because I feel like I've now read that book. <laughs> so what happened finally? The husband's reaction? I don't know. Fight? Did they, you know, make amends? Did they divorce? I don't know how what happened uh, immediately, okay. but eventually the wife left the country. All right. Um, so when she left the country, I think uh, that means either they are separated or they divorced or something. Right. But I, like I said, I did not follow. I I I not I chose not to follow up the the story again. Okay. Up from that point. Till right now. Yeah. All right, done with that. I feel like I've already read it. Now to your book that's making you be here in the studio with us is uh, Dangerous Thirst that has also an interesting story of uh, this uh, young lady who loses the parents and then she finally, because of pain, she falls into so many other things in the form of finding you know, happiness and enjoying life and meeting her needs. So basically talk about Dangerous th uh, Thirst before we proceed. Dangerous Thirst is a, is a story, is based on a true story. Uh -huh. of, a lead, of a young girl who is born into a pastoral family still. Uh -huh. um, the mother dies when she's young okay. and she doesn't understand why God has to take her away at, a, at, such, at such an age. When she needed her the most. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, 
the fact that she sees a father pray for the sick in church and and healing them yeah you know, miracles and, happening yeah and yeah. Uh, and also serving god right she doesn't understand why god has to take her away actually right so um the father remarries okay. but uh, i think at that point he, 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 he ignores the fact that this is taking toll on her children on his children sorry right uh so uh tiffany becomes uh promiscuous from no, first at first at rebellious first, rebellious and withdrawn uh, -huh. uh by the time she's she's going to high school she has changed school stories mm. high school in high school she's a very bright girl mm. but is all she's always out on disciplinary issues all right uh but manages to pass well uh, to pass her kcp exa kcse exams well right so after after that the exact period I think right now it has been scrapped. There's okay. that two year waiting period before you jo before one joins the un university. Right. So she's invited into a into a bash. All right. And uh, when she goes into that bash, uh she meets one 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 young uh, rich guy called okay. Kelvin. Mm -hmm. Uh Kelvin is driving a very he heavy machine. Right. And she's like where, where where in this world has this young boy gotten all this money from right so the party is in kelvin's house right so after everything that happens she ends up in kelvin's bedroom and then the following day is when she she realizes that she's been raped mm. By she Kelvin. got intoxicated during that party yes then, you know it was going down yeah like they say it's going down it was late yeah mm -hmm. so in the morning they have a very bitter altercation because when she threatens to uh, report the matter to the police okay. and then everybody that was in the party intervenes most of her friend okay then um, she goes down and that is how uh, a love affair with kelvin starts mm -hmm. uh, months later she realizes that she's uh, pregnant mm -hmm. for kelvin okay they get a child Mm -hmm. um Kevin uh gives a, a very good car mm -hmm. for giving him a child mm -hmm. a gift yes and mm -hmm. um, life continues right she's still asking Kevin what do you do for a living right but without getting any substantial uh response mm -hmm. then until one day the narcotics police unit Right. officers come knocking at their door right. and arrest both of them right that uh, is when uh, where where is the location in 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 this story in nairobi mombasa nairobi. where is this scene oh in nairobi yes okay sounds more for kilimani <laughs> 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 okay yeah okay. so uh -huh. now this is when now she realizes that she has been dating a drug trafficker right yes. the bomb is dropped yeah mm -hmm. they are arrested they spent several days in police cells mm -hmm. now the father uh, hires a lawyer who, who manages to prove that there is no connection correlation between uh, tiffany and drugs mm. so uh, at that time she's let off the hook but right. the guy is uh, the guy is charged in court denied bail and the case proceeds until he he gets uh, imprisoned for life right so that is when the her love story with with uh, with, with, with Kelvin, Kelvin ends. ends now t talk about where she's now traveled abroad to go work with another p different character ama this was still Kevin no this is a different dude yes. she's hooked up with yes okay so when uh, Tiffany comes to Nene gets to university ah. now she has a friend who introduces her to this the, the life of wababas and everything mm. in the city right. so they go to parties 
Yeah. They then over the weekends they are paid around fifty thousand and, and those, those those kind of things. Right. So then she start they start living life on the first on the first lane. Mm. Because and now soft life yeah, era. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Up to a point. Uh, at some point, one of they introduce a young another young girl to the to the to the group, and then everybody in every man in the team wants her. Right. So it's like a it's like a circle, and yes. you're pimped around different people who yes. have different kinds of financial depth. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So one draws draws a gun and starts shooting in in indiscriminately. Right. Killing almost everyone in the house, mm. save for Tiffany and and uh, her friend. No, her friend dies. Oh, her friend dies. So yes. she's solo now. It is her and one of the men who right. are left mm. because. The guy who the, who is the gunman mm -hmm. also turns the gun on himself hmm. after doing all this. Yeah. So, so what led to them doing that? Intoxication, an attack, spiritual warfare, whatever. No, it's not. It's a it's a fight. Like they were fighting for this for thing, this, for this oh, new gun. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see. And for then, a minute, I got lost. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> they were so fighting for this new gun, mm -hmm. and this guy was like, "I am the only one who can have her." Mm. Yeah. Okay. So after that, now you see that story ends, and then she moves. She moves on now to 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 the next stage. Okay. Where she dates her, her dean at the university, right? And uh, blackmails her into creating for her, into designing uh, and hook up website for her. Yes. This is now where she meets uh, the French boyfriend. Right. When she meets the French boyfriend, uh, they date they, in Kenya f they for quite almost a year. Okay. When while the guy is, is organizing travel documents for her, right? Then they they, they finally fly out. They f they finally fly out. Mm -hmm. Now only to realize, as we summarize, <laughs> only uh -huh. to realize that right. she has actually been pimped. She's 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 fallen into a trap. Right. Uh, Sold out. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, up to a, she she is she is into she is in sex slavery for almost six to eight months. Yeah, sex trafficking. Yeah, mm -hmm. until one day she manages now to escape to the embassy. She's repatriated to back to Kenya. Right. Fin manages to finish her degree uh -huh. and now starts a mentorship program to mentor yeah. young girls against uh, sex trafficking sex trafficking and mm -hmm. making some of the decisions that she has made okay. and also creating awareness to parents right so that that uh, they also need to 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 be keen on right. the emotional imbalances or, or literally mental health yeah, awareness of their children of their children yeah right you really have powerful storylines i pray one day you make it to the new york best-selling authors in the world and yeah. definitely you will please don't forget to give me a call but now let's proceed away from that you know writing is very powerful it's a very powerful form of expression yeah. even as journalists in journalism class you're taught to be an excellent writer yeah. you have to be an excellent speaker yes and then an excellent editor as well yes. but now for writing um, was it were you channeling into it as a means of you know self-expression because of these things that you've been through and then i feel like some of your stories would definitely work well in tv as films and movies i don't know how, how did that actually manifest for you um Personally, uh, I think I got in. I got a passion in, for writing, right, uh, right from when I was young, um, and then this grew with the things that were happening around me. Uh, I felt that documenting them would be a way of of of, uh, expressing, of uh, expressing myself well. and telling my story to the world. Okay. Yeah, and then. Um, this grew up now to the point that now uh, we started. I, I came to start writing the books that I have, okay. and some that are also yet to be launched. Right. Yeah. All right. So you can briefly take us through um, a person who wants to write a book. 
Yeah. Now, initially you, talk, you talked of writing down notes, hand notes, nini, nini, combining storylines left, right, and center. Yeah. And then finally, so if a person wants to professionally mm -hmm. take that journey of coming up with a book, how do they go through that process? Do you need maybe like an editor? Uh, there's even books that have a forward. I know you're, you're familiar with a forward. Yes. You give to someone who gives even a dissertation as well, yeah. and even some inside quotes as well. So yeah. please take us through that journey of having a book. Okay, the first step of having a book is developing the storyline. Okay. So when now you d develop the storyline, uh, you work through it, write the story up to the end. Okay. Then uh, you do your, your own correction for the grammar and, right. uh, and edit whatever you think you, you may have written that doesn't need to go out. Okay. Then after that, uh, you need to, uh, there are two avenues after yeah. that now. Right. Either whether you want to do the traditional way of publishing, right. which most writers are walking away from, okay. uh, or self-publishing. Right. Uh, personally, I've walked through the self-publishing journey. Right. Uh, so now, in self-publishing, uh, uh, like in my case, I always look for my own editor. Right. I know, uh, in a, I know several editors around. Okay. So you give them the book so that they can do thorough editing for any of the same. Right. So you, you can sit down with, yeah. with a, uh, a professional uh, book editor. Yes. You share with them your notes and they come up with a whole a sketch or a whole draft of a of, 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 of book. No, it is you comes so up with the you draft who comes first. up with the draft first. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now when you, you've come up with the draft, okay. you now give it to the editor. Right. The work of the editor is not to to is to thoroughly edit the book, uh -huh. make sure uh, each chapter develops into the other and everything flows, right. and grammar is correct and everything. Right. When they do this, uh, now you you go to the next stage of layout and and designing and the cover design. and stuff. Mm -hmm. Now the titling uh, as well. Yes. Right. When you after this now you you give the book to you you approach any of the publishers that we have right. who, who self publish for others right. because it's not everyone who self publishes right so you get your first three copies and then uh, if you want somebody to give you a forward as you indicated you right. know you have to give them the book the book first right they read mm -hmm. and then they write a forward. Mm. It's like some sort of an affirmation or yes to that to that book to yeah. make it valid that you yeah. know, I Brian Sabo, I have found it. that yeah. Prince yeah. is you know and I've yeah. read this book because it can help one two three yes. right mm -hmm. so they 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 write a forward okay and then it is included in the book right. and uh, on the cover on the cover still right and then now the the publisher. Uh, does the final printing. So mm. when you do the final printing, mm. the next step now is the next step is uh, getting it in, into the market, which is one of the most difficult things. All right. Yeah, you have to have a sound distrib distribution channel. Yeah, true. Uh, you have and now to with the era of digital yes. media, you have to have something called an e-book, yes. translating to even an, an audio book. Yes. And now podcasts yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. And that's where actually one of the best uh, bookstores that we have uh, comes in handy for us because they have an app mm -hmm. where if somebody wants to, to read an e-book, right. uh, they just download the, the app, buy it from it, and then read from the app. Right. Yeah. So you have now to approach this, uh, this uh, every other distribution channel that you may need to use yeah. and also create awareness. Right. Well, Even yeah. with outlets, physical outlets like models. I, I have a friend who, who uh, we interviewed here, yeah. her here on Tuesday as well. Yeah. She has written a teen's guide to the constitution and she's also reaching out to people even physically and giving them saying, hey, read this book. It will help you understand the constitution. It's important for you to read this book. Yes. And that's doing a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Going door to door telling people, you know, it's a lot of energy and time. Yeah. yeah. And also attending events. Right. Making sure that uh, you're well linked you with where, people. Yeah, where book, book festivals and events are happening, you be there, you make sure that your book is visible. Right. And also with the media and social media and everything. Right. It's, it's, that is the uphill task now.
Right. So now when you push, you come to a point and say, now I can launch the book. Mm -hmm. Like what we're doing today. They like have like a, like a book party launch. You know? Yes. We're launching a Dangerous Dust at Alliance Fonse. Right, it's a very yeah. powerful place as well. I used to visit there way back, Nicky Audition, Qua actor, but now I'm an actor here. <laughs> what happened? Uh -huh. <laughs> Good story. <laughs> we'll talk about it. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, back still to your books, uh, still on that professional part. So your stories, are they fiction, truth-based, or uh, what are they? Truth uh, or fiction? The truth. Okay. They're non-fiction. Mm -hmm. yeah. Both true accounts that happen to real people, real life situations. Yes. The mm -hmm. three books that I have out are real accounts. Okay. Um, there's also some, there's, there's something good that I'm, so, I'm also coming up with. I don't know where, how the church will receive it. Uh, related to Shakahola? Yeah. And, and, and this uh, false, false prophet that we've been having around. It's mm. called Pulpit Bandits. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully they won't pray against you. You disappear. Yeah. Uh, but I can't wait to also read that. It can be a good documentary as well yeah. for even TV. Now yeah. that you are an ex-military, yeah. I think you have so much to offer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now let's get to a different uh, trajectory. When writing, actually writing happens in so many forms. There's like three types of writing. And I believe the first one should be narrative writing. Yeah. Nar narrative or narrative where you're, you're explaining accounts of events unfolding from one leading to another to another. Yeah. And I believe most of yours, your writing style is narrative. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. Do you have maybe another one that has a different form of writing? Uh, the other one is called expository, but I think this one more happens in documentaries and a personal experience of being uh, like a news editor or something, you're exposing facts. And I believe the one you've just hinted right now about pulpit bandits, you yeah. use expository as a style of writing where you're exposing some people, mentioning them, dropping names, or literally hiding them in yeah. metaphors as, yeah. a, as a style of writing, right? Yes. Okay. But so, for the first three, uh, it's been narrative because, uh, uh, like the first two, it's it, they are true accounts of my life. Mm -hmm. Dangerous, that is, is a true account of of a friend. Okay. But how, when we go to pulpit bandits, definitely can't it can't be narrative because uh, I, I think it's expository. Yeah. You're exposing some hidden mysteries about this yes. profession yeah right? yeah so you'll be exposing so yeah the style is expository writing yeah right so yeah. when is it coming <laughs> i can't uh, read in fact i'd love to read that one first <laughs> uh it should be coming out before the end of the year before the end of the year yeah so for any recordings you've gathered like you went somewhere recorded have some clips or some written material because that's also part of the proof yes you see like like the fact that I've been, that I live in Mombasa, I will tell you that definitely I have attended, I, I, I have gathered enough information about the Shakaola thing. So you, you've been at Paul Mackenzie's church before? No, 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 no. But you have intelligence on it? Yeah. Right. Okay. Then uh, on, on so many other things, I've mm -hmm. been into churches here in Nairobi. Right. I've been, I've been, I've been uh, to churches in, in Nakuru. I've seen so much that is happening. Right. So it's it's quite explosive, yeah. that book. Just a little bit touch up maybe, what caught your attention? What are the similarities of behaviors in these events? Like you've seen it in this church, it's definitely happening in this church. Either people here are being scammed, others here they're using dark forces to manipulate people, and others people are just being like, you guys need to wake up. <laughs> you need to wake up because you guys could get to me find you like a spell or something. Did you gather some some material like that? You see, uh, the most you know, uh, the the biggest the, the biggest tool that these people use is indoctrination. Right. That's why you will find that uh, most of these of, of these uh, funny funny pastors they don't they will not invite any other pastor to their pulpit or something. Right. It has to be them on the mic every other time they're having a service. Right. And if you realize, like, most of them now have moved from the mainstream media, they are creating their own uh, TV, uh, TV stations. stations, where mm -hmm. their, their yeah. believers have to watch, uh, to watch that Probably. throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And they broadcast their sermons throughout the day. Yeah, so they've confined so, them to a certain yeah, mental You find that if you're, being, if you're continuously being fed the same story for quite some time, and this is what happened with the Shakawa people, mm -hmm. you, uh, you indoctrinate these people and 
uh, somebody who, you know you can't help somebody who is who is who is following a false prophet right. because they have been indoctrinated, indoctrinated. To, yeah to a point that if and if, even if you tell them sense mm. uh, they will think that you you are against your their belief yeah right yeah. and and and, and is, it, is it something maybe that uh, you would say if maybe if you had to intervene in that Shakahola event and maybe tip, would you go to that extent of giving up, dishing out information to the DCI or uh, since you're an ex-military, you know, you know all the authorities and all the levels of that line, would you go to that extent and tell them, hey, guys, I have, I have all the tips that you need to actually calm this story down? But I, I, I guess they, they also have this information. But why are they not but acting then, on it? <laughs> uh, you see, in most cases, uh, uh, intelligence guys don't prosecute. Okay, that is one of their limitation. So you limit. And then, and then again, uh -huh. uh, you see, the decision is always to the commanders. Right. Most of these people, these characters are known. Okay. You will not tell me that somebody woke up one day, indoctrinated people, more than six hundred people to death, right. and the local authorities in in Kilifi right. didn't know. We have a story where. Uh, one of the cabinet secretaries, when she was an MP, once complained right. that uh, this this guy uh, is Ma the Mackenzie. Paul Mackenzie mm -hmm. is uh, has been arrested so many times, but always finds his way out, out on bail, on and bail, and those kind of bail. things. Yeah, uh -huh. so it's not like these things are not known. So they they are somehow connected to even authorities. Is that you, what you'd say? I wouldn't say I wouldn't authoritatively say that, mm -hmm. but my point is that all everything that happens, you see, even if you you are a police officer and you you arrest someone, you take them to court, and the court grants them bail. What else can you do? Nothing. Because we, the court has we decided. every Kenyan has the right to presumption of innocence until Take proven guilty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, you there is nothing else you would do with them. Right. Until the case proceeds to conclusion, right? Yeah. So these are some of the, the some of the bureaucracies and dynamics that happen in prosecution right. in, in yeah. uh, when prosecuting some some of these uh, uh, cases, and that is why, for example, you've seen okay. there has been with the Mackenzie story, right. uh, the, the DPP has, has has amended this ch the charge sheet so many times. There is right. a time. He was released and immediately rearrested in the court Again. proceedings and, 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 uh, and those kind of things. Right. Because of the bureauc the dynamics of, 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 uh, of the law. Of, yeah. Right. So the law enforcer or even the, the, the DCI who are prosecuting the matter. Okay. They're also tied by the law. Right. If the, if the judge, if a magistrate grants someone a, you see, if this thing was, was happening and it had not caught the attention of the media, right. probably you would you'd be out. You would have been granted bail. Bail again. You can't, yeah. So you can't, go, you can't crucify the, the investigating officer. He did his work, filed right. his report, right. took it to the DPP. Right. They took the person to court. The court granted them bail. Right. Yeah. Uh, as, we, as we finalize on that, uh, Paul McKenzie, do you feel like he, he's, he's, he's finally going to be assassinated or he'll be life imprisoned? Because uh, in the recent update that, was, that happened last week, uh, he was in court actually, they, ho they had like a, a demonstration in court saying they're being denied food, they're being denied the basic human rights and he deserved to, to, to eat and be like anybody else. He even, he even told the judge one day you will die too as well. So, uh, do you see him dying or being imprisoned forever, or a miracle is going to happen again and he's released on bail? We have the CS saying that this guy will never come back. Mm -hmm. That is if, true, right? yeah. If uh, if the law is followed, uh -huh. but then again, uh, mo most most of these remanches when they ha when they uh, in prison, right. uh, and their cases are taking too long. Right. They will always come up with all manner of, of drama in court. Right. It's not the first case that we have seen uh, such drama happening in, uh, in courts. Right. And then also, I, I, I don't believe that, uh, that the prison authorities can deny anyone food. Right. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. Because if this person dies in your, in your possession or in your custody, 
you will uh, you will have to explain what happened right so i don't think uh, i don't think it is possible for someone to 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 for for a prison commander to because when the, when they leave the the the, the court right they are taken back to the prison so right. they are not in the hands of the police officers and anymore right so i don't or, or that whatever happened in court last week was just drama. Mm. There is no way uh, the There's prison even no hope for him to yeah. be out anytime yeah. soon. You see, when you come to a point that you, you know that you've lost hope completely, yeah. you can do everything, anything, mm -hmm. because you have nothing to lose. To lose yeah. There's a guy in Machakos. Right. Uh, he, he was uh, he remanded in Machakos, uh, but going to court in Kitui. Right. He had killed 19 people, so he had 19 murder cases. Right. At one point, he, he, he came to the court stuck naked. Mm -hmm. There's nothing you can do. Right. And you see, he's doing that because he knows that he has nothing there's to nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. By the right. time even this, the, the, the hearing of these murder cases are over, he'll right. be probably 80. Right. Still, uh, still on that as we move away, um, the Monica Kimani, since you're an ex-military and also an intelligence personality, do you feel like Joey Rongo is guilty and Jackie Mariba is guilty, judging from their body language? Because you, you guys are trained on body language as well. You just look at a person and you're like, I know things, but you don't know. You know? Do you feel like her body language tells a story of guilt and Joey as well? I will not comment on that. Please, uh, we sh we shouldn't get there, but, <laughs> but it's all right. It's no, all right. No, no, no. But um, okay, yeah, me too. Me, I'm just asking. I'm here to ask. Uh, now, uh, as an ex uh, as an ex military officer, joined uh, the military at 18. Hmm. You know what is happening to your personal life? Is there a successful marriage for you as a writer? Uh, do you have kids? What is your family saying? And now that you know you have all these things, you've had to write these books. What is going on in your personal life? Oh. Uh, in my, in my personal life, I think I'm the senior most eligible bachelor in Kenya right now. Mm -hmm. But I, I have one beautiful son. Okay. Handsome son, sorry. Mm -hmm. He's uh, eight. Okay. Uh, it, uh, that is, uh, what else? That is, that is my family life. Right. Uh, yeah. Still in touch with the mother? I'm uh, partially in, in talks. No. Not at all. What about now your real biological family? What do they say about you now that they know you have all this information? You are an ex-military. Because there's also some sense of fear that comes around being a person who is from the military. Uh, you've seen trauma traumatic, traumatic events. You've participated in some of them as well. Do people fear you? Do they? If, especially after you've, you've given them your story, you're like, I was an, in the army. Are they like, <laughs> they hold back a little bit? No, 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 not at all. You yeah. see, to, yeah. to, my, to my dad and mom, I will always be their child. Right. To my brothers and sisters, I will always be their sibling. Right. So, and these are people who know me. They are people who know that despite all this, it never changed me. Right. And then, uh, like, uh, you see, where, where, where's, where people, the society starts fearing you and the security organs start, start following an ex-military right. is when we come to, the po to a point, now you start using your military knowledge for criminal activities. Right. Because you see, you will not be released to the society and then uh, they, uh, they, 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 they just let you go. They will right. definitely watch over you. Right. So you have people tracking you as well till today? I'm, uh, for now it's done since you resigned in 2015. We, it's, been, it's been long and I have proven myself that I'm not, doing any, 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 I'm not engaged in, in any criminal activity. Okay. So why do you have to bother me? All right. Actually we are in the process, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in talks with, uh, with the KDF mm -hmm. so that they can, they can adopt uh, Tales of the Warfront. Right as one of their books, in uh, one of their documentaries in their libraries. Oh, so they'll have it even in video format as well? Yes. Filmed, edited, and also sold out. Yeah. I feel like you can be a good catch for Netflix if you get a contract very soon. Would you consider that if they said, hey, please welcome on board? Uh, if, if the opportunity comes, comes up, why not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, yeah. do you have a gun? Because probably you must have. You definitely must have a gun. For what? <laughs> You must have a gun. You, you want to tell me, bro, you don't have a gun? <laughs> For what? You do have a gun. Who, who do I have to protect myself against? Mm -hmm. You see, uh, most of these people, anybody who needs additional security, it's either you, 
you engage in in uh, in, in criminal activities and or, or something or these funny funny deals okay. the former chief justice william, william Mutunga, you mm. always find him walking walking uh, walking around alone driving himself mm. yeah, i've met him several times along gong road taking mm. a stroll with no bodyguard or something because I, I, I believe as long as you're not doing any, you're not doing any, you're not involved in any criminal activity right why would somebody follow you right. why would somebody want you dead mm. yeah because you have intelligence and, and then you can leak stuff why okay there's a there's a code of conduct and uh, this, that governs you as an ex ex military mm -hmm. and the official secrets act mm. yeah so okay. if you, you 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 well know that if you leak information that 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 you held in confidence yeah you can, that one can you, that that is a charge what if you held you agreed with someone to murder someone and promised to hold it in confidence but you left it mm. Mm. <laughs> agreed as a security officer or as an ex ex officer, ex military Either of the either of those sides. You see, uh, oh, let's let's leave that because <laughs> you were just about to give us the secrets. Oh my goodness, I'm trying my best to get the. No, no, <laughs> so, no. so uh, uh, before 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 we leave, um, maybe before you tell us. Uh, how people can get your book and support you and buy it. Yeah, I can see you have a tattoo on your right hand. Uh, maybe what is the name of that tattoo? What does it mean? Why did you make that decision <laughs> to have that tattoo on your right hand? Perhaps if you can tell us. Uh, this is it's written royalty. Mm -hmm. Meaning something? Uh, I th it came from from the virtue of my name, Prince. Okay. So and then. Uh, I coined it from that actually. A prince is is, is born into royalty, mm. into into a royal into a royal family and those kind right. of things. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. consider yourself that? Of course, yes. Okay. Because uh, we are all sons and 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 the name of God. Right. So we we are a royal priesthood. Right. So that is where I coined this this one from. So it's royalty. Yeah. All right. Now tell us where people can get your book, and uh, if anyone wants to participate in your book launch, you said it's happening. Uh, it's happening at Alios Fonse. Yeah. Today at what time? From 4:30 p.m. All right. You can get, can give them details if there's a number, an yeah. account, or a pay bill right now as we go. Uh, for anyone that wants to participate, if you want to get any of my books, uh, they are available at Nuria Bookstore. You can uh, you can download their app. You can search them from uh, on on all social media platforms, and also the, the books are available as uh, as paperback, uh, ad copy, and ebooks. Right. So for the ebook, you will have to go through the app. All right. Uh, There's a link or a website. You just download the Nuria app, and okay. then you search the titles, or right. you just search my name, Prince Musa. Right. You will see the books that are under my name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the Nuria app is to protect us from piracy because you right. can't forward the book. You can only read it from that. It's read only. Mm. You can't download it from the app. Right. You can only read it from there. Right. Yeah. And then for the event, we're launching Dangerous Dust today from uh, four thirty p.m. at Alliance Fonse. The mm. entry is a copy of the book. But right. well, if so, if uh, you don't have it, where can you get it? You can still. If you don't have it and you're in town mm -hmm. and, and you're interested to come, you can still come. All right. But is there a number they can call to get in touch with you? Yeah, my number is 0717 19 1499. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah, definitely that's where they can get it. Yes. All right. Who, who are some of the, of the people that will be there as we go? Uh, we'll have Diana Kamande. Mm -hmm. is, she, she's a. Uh, She's the, a leader of uh, of an NGO that is championing women and widows' rights. Okay. And we'll have a host of other writers, right? Uh, senior writers. I'm also expecting ex expecting some of them like uh, Arthur Mwana Ali and some other guys. Right. Yeah. Right. That yeah. will be an interesting event. Yeah. All right. We wish you the very best. Personally, I can't wait to see you in the New York best-selling, you know, uh, as a best-selling author, syndicated, mm -hmm. published. Um, 
All right. Yeah. We have been speaking to uh, Prince Musal. Thank you so much for coming through and sharing with us all the experiences and all the knowledge that you have. Thank you. All right. Here's what we call it a day. Thank you so much for watching. My good name is Sako. See you next time right here on Why in the Morning.